A banner is a flag or other piece of cloth bearing a symbol, logo, slogan or other message. A flag whose design is the same as the shield in a coat of arms is called a banner of arms. Banner making is an ancient craft. Church banners commonly portray the saint to whom the church is dedicated. The word derives from French word, banner, and late Latin bandum, a cloth out of which a flag is made. The German language developed the word to mean an official edict or proclamation and since such written orders often prohibited some form of human activity, bandum assumed the meaning of a ban, control, interdict or excommunication. Bans has the same origin meaning an official proclamation, and abandon means to change loyalty or disobey orders. Semantically, to leave the cloth or flag, heraldic banners. A heraldic banner, also called banner of arms, displays the basic coat of arms only, i.e., it contains the design usually displayed on the shield and emits the crest, helmet or coronet, mantling, supporters, motto or any other elements associated with the coat of arms. A heraldic banner is usually square or rectangular. A distinction exists between the heraldic banner and the heraldic standard. The distinction, however, is often misunderstood or ignored. For example the royal standard of the United Kingdom is in fact a banner of the royal arms. The full armorial achievement of the arms of the Kingdom of Scotland. The arms is depicted on the escutcheon, the royal standard of Scotland. The Banner of the King of Scots, Banner of Cardinal Wolsey, Banners in a Religious Context. The prophet Isaiah was commanded to raise a banner and exalt his voice. Habakkuk received a similar order to write a vision upon tables that could be read by one who runs past it. In Christianity banners in churches have, in the past, been used mainly for processions, both inside and outside of the church building. However, the emphasis has, in recent years, shifted markedly towards the permanent or transient display of banners on walls or pillars of churches and other places of worship. A famous example of large banners on display is Liverpool R.C. Cathedral, where the banners are designed by a resident artist. Banners are also used to communicate the testimony of Jesus Christ by evangelists and public ministers engaged in open-air preaching. Trade Union Banners The iconography of these banners included mines, mills, factories, but also visions of the future, showing a land where children and adults were well-fed, and living in tidy brick-built houses, where the old and sick were cared for, where the burden of work was lessened by new technology, and where leisure time was increasing. The same kind of banners are also used in many other countries. Many, but not all of them, have red as a dominant colour. In Australia in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, trade union banners were unfurled with pride in annual eight-hour day marches which advocated eight hours labour, eight hours recreation and eight hours rest. These marches were one of the most prominent annual celebrations staged in Australia by any group. In Sydney alone, by the early 20th century, thousands of unionists representing up to 70 different unions would take part in such parades, marching behind the banner emblematic of their trade. Most of these banners have not survived. The Labour Council of NSW has the largest surviving collection at Sydney Trades Hall, Sydney Trades Hall in Sussex Street, Sydney. The State Library of NSW in Sydney has a small collection of trade union banners that were donated to the library in the early 1970s, such as this photograph of a Federated Society of Boilermakers. Iron and Steel Shipbuilders of Australia banner thought to have been made c. 1913-1919. The Federated Society of Boilermakers, Iron and Steel Shipbuilders of Australia was formed in 1873 and joined the Amalgamated Metal Workers Union in 1972. The banner features a kneeling figure in the centre surrounded by scroll work and is decorated with Australian native flowers and images.
representative of the work of the union's members such as a New South Wales Government Railways 34-class steam locomotive, the Hawkesbury River Rail Bridge built in 1889, and a furnace. The reverse of the banner shows the warship Australia at sea. The banner is canvas and was painted by Sydney firm Althaus and Geiger, master painters and decorators. Founded in 1875, the company is still in operation. The banner is a powerful interpretive tool in communicating the experience and the history of the Australian labour movement. For more on the design and making of these banners, see Banner Making. Sports Banners Sports fans often buy or make banners to display in the grandstands. Team banners typically contain the logo, name or nickname, motto and the team colours. Banners on individual competitors can contain a picture or drawing of the player. Sports banners may also honor notable players or Hall of Fame athletes and commemorate past championships won. These types of sports banners are typically hung from rafters in stadiums. Similar to other sports banners, they feature the color palette of the team's logo, the logo, names of players, and championship winning years. Uruguay's club national de football supporters made a 600 by 50 meter banner that weighs over two tons. They claim it is the largest in the world. It was unveiled in April 2013 in a Copa Libertadores football match at the Estadio Centenario. Advertising banners often fabricated commercially on a plastic background. The banner industry has developed from the traditional cut vinyl banners to banners printed within large, ultra-wide format inkjet printers on various vinyl and fabric materials using solvent inks and ultraviolet curable inks. Banners are used in many business ventures, marketing to their potential audience. A number of British towns and cities have whole series of banners decorating their city centres, effectively advertising the town or its special features and attractions. Pre-printed banners, albeit commonly used, are simple and accessible. Banners can be printed in enormous formats, with a full range of rich colours. They can also be used in many different physical situations whether it be hanging from an existing fixture, fixed to a wall or even freestanding. When an advertising banner is hung or suspended between posts, grommets or another method of attachment are necessary to prevent the banner from tearing or flying away. Aluminum grommets can be punched into the banner and used as secure entry points to tie the banner down. This insulation method allows for more durable advertisements. Some vendors offer pre-installed grommets. Another common form of freestanding banners are retractable displays. Banners can be found plastered behind a window screen, as billboards, atop skyscrapers, or towed by airplanes or blimps. As with variable of size and quantity, the number of sides and quality of ink are as much of a crucial factor. In an instance of retail stores which purchase pre-printed clearance banners or a variety of sale banner, a banner facing underneath or against glass is absorbing exposure from the sun. A banner printed on UV outdoor ink will last several years to a decade where cheaper ink fades, requiring frequent replacement. Being behind glass, a two-sided banner can be displayed from the inside and out, often building recognition between shoppers and caretakers. Three-sided banners are often appealing as there is dimension and can be embellished differently. The more sides that exist, the more angles the banner covers, which is a possibility where a two-sided banner doesn't face the viewer from center of the room or streets. Another manifestation of advertising banners, unique to the 21st century, are banner ads, which are advertisements on websites. The banner ads contain hyperlinks to other websites. Also, on free music streaming services such as Spotify and Pandora, audio advertisements will play in between songs.